bag outside of your shop. That's what it's all about. Want to know more? Stick around. We're making shavings. All you got to do is watch. That's a nice piece of work. Edgar did that and sent it to me because he thought I needed a flag outside my shop besides the one I got to be in a bed inside the shop and another one because I'm American and I believe it is. So thank you Edgar, I really appreciate what you sent on. It's a beautiful piece of work and it's a major tribute to those people that put themselves in harm's way to protect our freedom. I just heard over the weekend that four members of our military, at least four, passed away this week in accidents through training. Get a hold of this. These are volunteers putting their life in the way to protect our freedom. That's what we want. That's what we deserve. That's what they're doing. We need to thank them. And that's called the Freedom Pen Project. And if you're not in the Freedom Pen Project, I've got a couple of videos on it. I think I'll maybe pop up a video or something to show you that. But you can get involved. Send me the pen. I'll send it to Doug Rowe. He's going to send it to his boy. You see, Doug is active in the Marine Corps. And so is his boy. And his boy is a man. He's active Marine Corps. And they're going to put these pens in active Marine Corps and Army troops and Navy troops and Air Force troops and even the Coast Guard's hands as they see. Because they're protecting our freedom and we're going to thank them for it. I got some new stuff in this week. Besides the sign I got it from Edgar. I got something in this week from... Uh, this edit might not work right, but I lost the guy's name. I have to tell you this. Edgar sent me the nice sign behind me, the, the flag, the American flag. And that's on my shop. It'll stay there. Um, also got something in, a photograph of something from Rod Humphrey. Rod, look, take a look at this. This is what Rod does. A little carving. How trim you look. It made me look trim, man. You're doing better than my doctors are doing right now, Rod. That's a cool idea. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it. That was really nice. But besides that, I got a beautiful platter in from Ron Radliff. Ron's a dear old friend. He's an Air Force buddy, and he made me a retired Air Force, well, it's an honorary retiree. I push it. Best years of my life right there. I learned a lot. I grew a lot. I did a lot. And thank you, Ron, for doing that. But then I got some prizes in. I got some packages in. Ruth now sent me a new thing for doing some little medallions. Nice Christmas gift idea. We're going to do a video on how to do that. Fairly simple. The beauty is you can do it on your lathe, and you don't need a lot of high-priced equipment to do it. It's a reasonable project, and when you look over and see your granddaughter, your grandson, your niece, your nephew wearing that little medallion, or the pen, or the earrings, or the bobbins, or whatever, you want to know they're thinking about you. Yeah, they're thinking about you, okay? And then I got some super glue in. This is coming from Starbond Adhesives. I like Starbond. I like the folks at Starbond. They're very professional. But I had some technical questions about finishes. They're working with me on getting those answers for you. And oh yeah, by the way, you ask me questions, I got a litany of answers because not everybody agrees. But we all know, don't we? All right, we're gonna share that with you. Starbound sent me this crack filler. And I got a beautiful piece of wood right there. It's got a crack in it and we make some medallions out of. Got to thinking about it last night. I'll take Bruce Jake, this group, and a little bit of talent Pardon me, just a little bit of talent and turn out some Christmas gifts from it. So it's been a pretty good week here in the shop. We're getting a lot done. I was looking to see if we got anything else. We got a few photographs to share with you of things that came in. I'm changing how that goes out. So it's a little bit different format. I hope you like it. Uh, we're going to talk about angle jigs. <sighs> Not really. I spent a day in the shop. I shopped with a bunch of guys the other day. And that's on WorldwideWoodTurners.com. But they're sharpening a tool and setting up a jig for doing sort of an Ellsworth grind. Now, if you want the Ellsworth grind, it's grind, grind. It's on my website under sharing information. This thing this is Ellsworth grind. It'll show you the magic, the math, and the technique on how to get this grind on your bowl gouge. I actually have that grind a little bit on my roughing gouge. Just a little, I'm working on it. But how do you set it up? Well this shows you it's two inches out of the jig, 
four inches below the center line of the, of the shaft, and seven inches from the face of the wheel, and you lock it there, and you leave it there. Well, on Blackhawk tools, we have an accu set that you can lock in, so you can make one slide just for that. Don't stick it in, lock it down, and poop you on, you on, on the way. That's a nifty way. This jig, I'm offering to give you at no cost. I gotta go slow about that because people think I'm making a buck on this. Maybe you feel like sending me a buck, it's okay. But this jig will let you adjust your tool rest to match the angle you want. You mark on a jig what you have, or you put a little safety pin in it, or a little drift pin in it, where you go back to the same setting. And every time you sharpen, if you set that post, that point, with the face of that tool, that grinder, I'll get all this right, okay? Then you're going to get a perfect grind every time. My friends in the tool industry, even I don't really like that because you can't sell tools if people don't wear them out. If you wear them out, you're wearing them out on the grinder. I know a lot of woods that wear away the wood, the, the, the steel. So if I'm not putting it on the floor, I'm putting it on the wood. So I'll give you this. It's on my website and on sharing information. It's also in this month's newsletter, Making Shavings. If you don't get Making Shavings, send me an email to my email address, captaindaycastle.gmail.com, and I'll add you to the list and send it to you. There's also an email list there, an email contact from me, and it also gives you little details on Worldwide Wood Turning. Two different entities. Two totally different entities. If we're going to do a little something or sharpening, being in this guy's shop this week, I was blessed. I had nine wood turners in a shop at one time. And there was no there was no eagle trip. Really, there was no eagle trip. Everybody was equal. Okay, skipper's a little better. But everybody's equal. But nobody was bossing anybody around, and no opinion counted more than yours. So these guys got together and we were talking about grinding and sharpening. Alright. They had a really nice Rikon grinder with some CBN that stands for Can't Be Nicer. I know it stands for something else, but that's not going to remember. Wheels on it. And he had a, a one rated about 300. And he was dressing up this guy's tool. You see, this guy came in with a tool. And I said, hey, how you doing? Alright. And we talked for a minute. Because you stand there and tell lies, right? Um, and he hands the tool, he said, I'm having a problem cutting with this. And I said, quietly, I said, whatever you do, don't tell them it's sharp. And he goes, why? I just did that. I said, no, don't tell them it's sharp. Whatever you do, don't tell them you think this is sharp. You got nine people, let them do it. A minute or so later, he was talking to one guy, really nice guy. And he says, wow, this thing really cuts some wood if you sharpened it. I looked over and went, hey, you know, you know what I told you. He's got it. They went to the sharpener, redressed that edge, took the third and fourth bevel I had on it because he wasn't using the jig, set it down, roped it, walked it in, and got it right where it's supposed to be to cut. You see the beauty when you get into a club or a club atmosphere? You can share these, this information. I was talking about doing a CBM wheel. Then a guy came up and said, but I got to have carbon wheels, which grind away, don't cut away grind away the surface of the tool, and that's metal on the floor. But he used this car, showed the carbon wheels, and they had some carbon wheels over there, and he showed them, and he got a really nice edge. Nice edge is something, it's qualified. A nice edge on the straight razor gives you a gorgeous cut, gorgeous shade, it's one pass. You don't see the guy going, trying to get your beard off. If you do, give up, get out. Um, but when you're turning wood, you're not doing it on one pass. That wood's spinning at one, two, three thousand RPMs. Or the company grinds five thousand RPMs. And you're taking it off where you where you angle the tool, the sharpness of the tool, and the degree in which you impact the wood. So another guy came over, took it off the carbon wheel, went over and showed the guy that his had a little bit of teeth on it, a little bit of notch, but it wasn't smooth as can be. It was smoother than that on a CBN wheel, but not as smooth could be on a carbon wheel. He went over and did some shear scraping, which Tim had never done shear scraping, and now he's in love with it, because he put the handle down low, brought it upright, and showed how that little fine touch of that blade 
sheared away the wood. Didn't plow it away, didn't gouge it away, didn't tear it away, it sliced it away. It was really good. So went to that. And then another guy, they were talking about skews, and they were not doing a skew project, but they had a little finial, which was a skew project. And the guy was going to turn his little finial down, and he picked up his, his skew and went over to the belt sander. The belt sander. I got one sitting right there. I got a 220 belt on. It took me forever to find that belt. I can put a diamond edge on my skew and then touch it up with my diamond stone because the heat transfer is lower. I remove less metal, which means less tool being thrown on the floor. And I end up with a project I can look at right there in front of God and everybody can see what I'm doing. That grinder, that belt sander, and the marks light saved me a lot of tools. It saved me some tools too. So I'm going to talk more about that too. And oh yeah, here's fair warning. <clears throat> I'm 70 years old. That's not much of a fair warning, which means take me a little something to do about it. But if you come to my shop and you're in your 60s and you decided to grow a ponytail for a fashion statement, you might lose ponytail here. I got a lawn trimmer right there. It might not be pretty, but please, think about your age and what you're doing. Whew, that's something else. Well, that's it. We're in the shop. We're making shavings, having a little fun, looking at a couple of things. Oh, we have to talk about a card scraper. You know what a card scraper is? When I worked in the mill shop in 1962, I touched the guys one time. I thought he'd bite my arm off, but he did, and I lived. But card scrapers are wonderful. And I watched the demonstration the other day where a guy put a burnish on a card scraper, right out of the vise, walked over to a curved piece, spinning on a lathe, and took a cut you wouldn't believe. Finer than sandy. We're going to talk more about that and cover that. That's all coming up here. As you and I get together, start making shavings with Big Eye Productions. Take care. Be good. You can't be good. Be quiet.